it's I, still again I'm, again we no. were misled that there was supposedly protests and then something sprang out of that an assault sprang out of that and that was easily but ascertained I, that that was not the fact but, but and the american know, people could have known that within days and, and they they didn't know that with all due respect the fact is we had four dead americans was it I because understand. of a protest or was it because of guys out for a walk one night who decided they'd go kill some americans what difference at this point does it make? Just when she thought it was safe to dip her toe back in the hearts and minds of America, Benghazi documentation chains her yet again to another lie to the American people, stating that without a shadow of a doubt she knew and the Pentagon knew Benghazi was planned 10 days in advance. Good luck escaping that bombshell, Hillary. Drunk on power and the promise of secretive backdoor deals dangled in front of you by the global banking syndicate you truly answer to. What difference at this point does it make? Her husband's chickens have now come home to roost, and not only will she be defending all of her lies, Hillary Clinton's platform calls for a reformation of her spouse's policies. Bill Clinton signed the 1994 Violent Crime Control Law and Law Enforcement Act. Harsher sentencing laws followed as states were given fiscal incentives to implement them. One in 15 African American men are incarcerated, yet African Americans only make up about 13% of the U.S. population. The incarceration rates have skyrocketed by 500% in just 30 years. The $80 billion a year prison industrial complex has thrown people behind bars for 5 to 10 years on first-time drug offenses. In other developed countries, sentences average out to be around 6 months, probation, or no jail time at all. According to California Prison Focus, no other society in human history has imprisoned so many of its own citizens. The prison industrial complex is one of the fastest growing industries in the United States. This multi-million dollar industry has its own trade exhibitions, conventions, websites, and mail order internet catalogs. It also has direct advertising campaigns, architecture companies, construction companies, investment houses on Wall Street, plumbing supply companies, food supply companies, armed security and padded cells, and a large variety of colors. According to the Left Business Observer, the federal prison industry produces 100% of all military helmets, ammunition belts, bulletproof vests, ID tags, shirts, pants, tents, bags, and canteens. Prison workers supply 98% of the entire market for equipment assembly services, 93% of paints and paintbrushes, 92% of stove assembly, 46% of body armor, 36% of home appliances, 30% of headphones, microphones, and speakers, and 21% of office furniture airplane parts, medical supplies, and much more. Prisoners are even raising seeing eye dogs for blind people. Thanks to prison labor, the United States is once again an attractive location for investment and work that was designed for third world labor markets. A company that operated an assembly plant in Mexico near the border closed down its operations and relocated to San Quentin State Prison in California. In Texas, a factory fired its 150 workers and contracted the services of prison workers from the private Lockhart, Texas prison, where circuit boards are assembled for companies like IBM and Compaq. And that's just a small sample of the damage her husband did. With all of her corporate ties, lies, and questionable alibis, are we really supposed to believe Hillary Clinton has America's best interests in mind? John Bound, Infowars.com.